just I just chose this reference um, image. What I was trying to say is that I need to make sure my 18 by 24 inch drawing paper pad is the same size of my reference. Now there's a bit of a problem, right? Why is that? Is because if you notice the length of the actual drawing is a little bit wider, right? That uh, the width is wider than the actual, actual uh, drawing paper. So there's multiple things I can do. I could hypothetically crop it. So I can say probably right about what? What about here? I can crop that. Just go to file, or excuse me, go to tools and go to crop. I can do that because that will be more proportionally correct from my actual drawing, right? Because before it was too wide. And this is something I want you guys to start to think about. When you're photographing your actual still lifes, right? You can, you know, create your still life, find a spot in your, in your, uh, in your home, um, wherever you want to do it, and then set up your still life. Uh, I want you to photograph this, okay? Because you need to upload it by the end uh, of next week. You'll upload your reference, which will be a part of your assignment. So when I'm looking at you, what you're looking at from your reference, I have more context to how I can grade your work. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying to really think about your reference, have fun cropping it, okay? You could also zoom in, right? Let's say if you wanna use just, I'm gonna say just this side, for example. Let's do that for the sake of the demo. If I just wanna zoom in on that sort of proportion and just really get in there, right? And not worry about the entire image. I can do that, but I need to be mindful about this process. So keep that in mind, okay? I have to think about how I want uh, to have my composition arranged and also think about uh, looking at my surface of my drawing paper. Because again, this is something that I want you guys to get in the habit of, of, of really practicing with the material before you start, okay? Any other questions so far? Again, sorry about that, I was on mute. <laughs> that happens all the time. Okay, um, what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna crop the image to right about, I'm gonna say, right about, actually, hmm, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna change orientation to this, to a landscape, just for the sake of why not, okay? So I'm gonna change it to that, I'm gonna crop this. And I'm gonna use this as my composition. Does anybody have any issue with that? No. Okay, everybody can hear me, correct? Yes. <laughs> yes. I gotta make sure. Okay, so let me stop screen sharing. So everybody should have that view of my hand, right? So I have my second camera posted. I have my 18 by 24 inch Strathmore paper, okay? This is your paper pack. Just I'm gonna move some of those drawings underneath. Okay. Now I have a bit of a few problems. Uh, um, how yeah. how how to go and then find your hands? I'm just seeing your names page. Okay, so that's that's important here. I'll do this again. Um, uh, on on um, Zoom, on the top right where it says view. Do you see that, Fatima? Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Click on that. Mm -hmm. Click on gallery. Mm -hmm. And then everybody's screen will come up, right? Go. Yes. You, you see my hand on the other camera? Yeah. 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 Over, move your mouse over that screen on that box. Mm -hmm. while I'm, uh, moving my hand. And then you'll mm -hmm. see three lines. Yes. You see three lines. Mm -hmm. uh, the three dots. I apologize. And then hover over the click on that. Click on pin. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Makes it bigger. Yeah. Okay. And again, guys, this is our first attempt of the demo. So I know it takes a little bit of a wiggle room. So hopefully we'll get through that process. Uh, anybody else have any difficulty finding uh, how to make my the screen bigger for yourself so you guys can see it better? Okay. Now I have a bit of a problem. And I just realized this uh, when I got home because I was in my art appreciation class this morning that I left my drawing <laughs> materials on my desk in my office. 
But what I do have, which I'm going to use for the demo, are some charcoal pencils, and they're both mine, compressed, and they're both um, uh, darks and lights. I'm going to break them up so I can use them as an actual charcoal material. Um, but for the sake of this demo, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I start initially in this process, how I create my first sort of uh, composition in terms of early sketches. And then we'll talk a little bit about finalizing how to finish the drawing. Okay. Any questions? I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see the whole thing. Okay. Uh, and again, I do apologize, but what you should have and what you can follow along with us during this demo is your vine, which is the sort of rounded soft charcoal, your compressed, which is the harder square charcoal, which is black, and then your compressed white. Those are the three materials we're gonna be using. We're also gonna be using a white eraser. And then, oh, that's actually another thing I forgot. You need some paper towels. This is your best friend, okay? Absolutely necessary. One, for um, multiple in terms of reason, in terms of looking at this as an actual uh, useful tool, you could use this. So for example, if you have a drawing here on top, you can just take your paper towel, hover over your hand if you want to work on this side or if you want to work on this side and gently lower your entire wrist, entire arm, and then start working here. Because if you lift it up, all of your natural grease uh, from your hands will pick up the charcoal itself. So keep that in mind. Any questions about that? Okay, let me get my... I just realized I don't even have my needed eraser. Huh, that's strange, where did I put my... It's okay, we're gonna use the white just for the sake of the demo. Um, again, I would highly recommend everybody after class who will watch some of those demos because we'll talk a little bit about exactly uh, the materials we're gonna, you're gonna be using for that uh, assignment. But for the sake of this demo, I'll be using the charcoal pencils because that's all I have, unfortunately. Um, and then I'll also, in case, let's say, for example, if you do need to come in person and want to come on campus, I'll be on campus on Monday nights, Mondays uh, from 6 to 8.20, okay? If you want to come into my classroom and look at it in the live person, you can do that as well, okay, if you would like. And I do apologize. There's a little bit of light coming in from above because the light is... There's like weird, strange lighting I have in my uh, counter. Okay, questions before I start? <coughs> Excuse me. So what I have here, I'm gonna have my charcoal um, kind of aligned right under my drawing paper pad. And I'm actually gonna have my paper towel right about there, okay? I'm also gonna bring in some blue painter's tape. And this is important because you really want a clear, clean, if you can, drawing. So keep that in mind. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna tape out about an inch from the corners, edge to edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. And once I'm done with my drawing, I can remove this. And I have a really interesting one inch border around the edges of my drawing. So if there's any problems or anything like that, or I have any difficulties messing up, I can stick to my edges of my actual paper. And let me know guys, if I'm going too fast, if the video you can't see is not clear, as well as um, if my voice disappears. So what I've done, again, I've edged out the, uh, the entire frame of my actual composition. But I'm also changing my orientation, remember, from vertical to what? Horizontal, okay? Because we've changed our reference. And we did that just for the sake of the demo, just for fun. Unless if anybody wants me to do a vertical composition, it's up to you guys. Okay. Again, guys, so I can't hear or see anybody. So if you have any questions, feel free to just state your name and just say, hey, Ayad, I have a question about, and then we can, I can go back to it. I'm gonna zoom out slightly. Let me do a little bit more. That's enough. Actually, a little bit more. 
There you go. That's enough. And then let me adjust. So what's really crucial about this is that I'm being mindful about my entire composition, okay? Let me pull up my reference. Now, what I want to keep in mind, and this is, I see this a lot, students have a difficulty of always, always starting ahead. What I mean, what, what do I mean by this? So what I would like for you, everybody to do is once you're starting your drawing, I really want to kind of get you guys in the habit of thinking abstractly. What, I, what do I mean by that? So you want to take your charcoal, and again, if you want to follow along, okay? Should make sure this is the right perfect. This is a sort of compressed, this is a sort of a vine charcoal pencil that I usually use when I'm drawing them on my own. But again, we're, we're working with our vine charcoal first. Make sure to work with your vine charcoal first. Do not, I repeat, do not work with your compressed dark charcoal first. It is much more difficult to erase, it is much more challenging to get. Um, into the nicks and crannies of fixing the drawing in the beginning half, okay? So keep that in mind. Questions about that? Okay. So I'm gonna hold this as a standard sort of pencil. You could hold it like this. You could hold it like this. There is no right or wrong way to do it, okay? And what I like to do is kind of almost go to the middle, okay? Work really loosely. I'm using my entire arm, and especially in terms of my wrist. What I'm trying to do is I'm gonna slowly just start making some shapes. Making a circle here, making sort of a vertical line that runs through the center and then another horizontal line. Very abstractly, I'm not worrying about any details. Here is my sort of box. And again, if you wanna work on the same drawing, the reference is available under the modules tab so you can follow along. There's that box right over here, very gradually, okay? Here's the frame of the cloche, of the glass cloche right here. Not worrying about anything right or wrong, not worrying about my details, no, nope, it's not important. You wanna loosely kind of get everything in there, just loosely. I'm gonna move my head slightly here, about my ears. But my nose, my mouth, my eye. It looks like a goofy llama, which I love, but I don't care about any details. I'm not worried about any of that. Here's the uh, little plant that comes in the back, the back of the uh, planter. Here's the chest, here's the legs. Notice I'm working with sort of geometric shapes, circles and uh, semicircles. Uh, with squares, with rectangles, I'm not worrying about any detail because I'm going to go over back the entire thing, right? This is something I want you to really instill in your minds. Do not worry about any details because that's not important. Here's that little rose, uh, what's it called? Uh, rose quartz uh, object. Here are the beads. And I noticed that they're foreshortened, but notice what I'm doing. I'm just framing that composition. I'm not worrying about that detail of how it's supposed to be rendered. I'm just saying it's gonna go right here. because so I'm gonna go back and go work on it a little bit further. Okay. Here is the jewelry box. I'm, I'm assuming it's a jewelry box, by the way. I might be wrong. It could be something else. It's a little bit wider. Notice these lines are now overlapping and you can start to see it gets a little darker because I'm adding what? More pressure. The less pressure, the better. The reason why, if you have more less pressure, you can erase and it sort of disappears. With, and this is only with your vine, not with your compressed. Again, I'm gonna say that multiple times. Always start with your compressed charcoal first. Uh, am I going too fast? Anybody? No. Okay. I'm going too fast, guys. Let me know, please. Here's my lemon. Okay. Here are the rest of my beads. And here is that, I think it's a candle, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. 
Okay, here's my drapery. This is also I'm gonna include. I'm gonna see it here, the folds right around here. Notice I'm going over, I'm going over all the objects because I wanna be able to see how it aligns spatially. Okay. Now at these early stages, it looks like a hot mess, but this is what you want because now we can correct it, right? We can go back and figure out, okay, how wide is this to this object? How tall is that glass cloche in relationship to the stand? How wide are these beads on the bottom here? What about the lemon? The lemon is foreshortened. So that means if that's the biggest thing in, the, in our foreground, it should be what? The biggest. So the scale is gonna be what? Amplified, so on and so forth. These are things, these are strategies I want you guys to start to use once you're really getting in there in the nit, nit and gritty to kind of figure out what is working in the drawing? What do I wanna remove? What do I wanna add? And I want you to have that sort of power and authority, right? Have that sort of initial idea and say, you know what? I'm not happy with this candle. I'm gonna take it out. I'm not happy with any of this side of this drawing. I'm gonna take it out. Or I'm gonna add something else. You could do that by all means, but really try to be mindful about every step throughout this process, okay? I'll work on the central object here a little bit now in detail, and then we'll go from there. If we have any questions or concerns, guys, just feel free to stay, uh, uh, speak. Just remember to state your name. Now I'm just working with more of that composition of the head. And notice, I'm gonna zoom in slightly. Is that visible? Can you guys see that? Is that okay? Is that not? Is that off? Yeah. Hold on. That's straight. Okay. As long as it's like not disjointed or distorted from that shape. Okay. Now, notice some of these lines that are overlapping, right? I'm now going to slowly add a little bit more pressure. Notice how dark that becomes too, which is really crucial. Add a little bit of pressure. And again, another cre uh, key ingredient of your actual tools is your hands. You can start blending some of those areas, okay? If you would like, you do not have to, but for the sake of this demo, we're gonna actually do it uh, simultaneously, okay? So this is the sort of the head of the skull of the, of the llama. This is the sort of the neck of the llama. This is the body. And I notice it's almost semi uh, shortened. So I need to keep that in mind. So the body is gonna be slightly smaller, but then it's also gonna be foreshortened in the back. And I noticed that, the, I don't know the name of this plant, but like the plant behind the llama's back is gonna sort of align right in front of obviously what's behind the back of the llama. But what I'm trying to do is sort of see, figure out the rest of the composition of the body. So when I go back and start adding more pressure, you'll start to see how things are now starting to add into the rest of the composition. And I notice that's where the leg is, okay? All of this will be erased or blended in, so keep that in mind. So don't worry about too much about erasing. In terms of the lengths, lengths should be right about there. And this is the side of that jewelry box, okay, which is right about there. Now I can blend all this together if I want to, but then now I can start erasing. So let's start doing that right now. I'm using my white eraser. Ideally, you want to use your kneaded eraser too, because it can actually remove more, uh, a little bit less, but you can get some nice textures. But let's say if the object is semi-opaque, meaning you can't see through, or you can slightly see through, but not, not as much. Have fun, again, with your compressed, or excuse me, with your vine before you get into your compressed, okay? Hold on, I think this neck is a little, I see a side of here that's slightly wider. And here is sort of where that shadow would be. 
there's just sort of another cast shadow right over there. So I'm gonna erase this. And now we have a really interesting composition of the llama. Notice I added way too much pressure on this line. It's gonna be difficult for me to go back to erase, but what I can do, again, depending if you wanna do this or not, you can start adding some more pressure by just making, using this, I'm using the side of the compressed, or excuse me, the vine pencil. Again, you'll use this with your uh, compressed charcoal. I'm gonna fill it in and you can start to hide some of those imperfections if you want with value, okay? This is really, really crucial. This is really also important to start to think about. Now, this is the head, this is the nose, and right about here is the mouth. And the ears, slightly bigger actually, and the ears on this side, are right around here. And notice there's sort of a side here on that, and then there's almost this uh, sort of interesting composition of where this brow is. I'm gonna add some, actually add some value. It almost looks like it's aggressive, which I appreciate. Kind of gives some more personality to the llama. There you go, that's better. But now I can start adding some value. And again, you could always erase but I want you to also have some fun doing these processes. Okay, I can use my fingers. Notice uh, some of the fingers are dirtier than the other. So if my pinky is clean, my ring finger is semi, a little bit of the dirt on there, a little bit of charcoal. There's more charcoal on my middle and then my index has the most. I'm gonna use my index. And I kind of want to be aggressive in these in, in these areas because you want to have fun on this process. And I'm going to use my mid, uh, middle and index to kind of really get in there. But then I can go back. Let's say if I want to add highlights, I can use my eraser to kind of refine some of those areas. blend some of those areas in back in here. So you're gonna have some really interesting development of lights and darks throughout that process. Any questions so far? Can you guys see that? I know it's a little difficult to see. I know the camera is not the best quality. I'll zoom out a little bit. You can see now, later on, how big of a jump that was from second layers to the kind of preliminary first layers that we added in the beginning, okay? Now, throughout this process, I really want you to start to think about adding specific light sources. So obviously my light source is coming in from my right. So I'm being mindful and letting my center of this object of the llama planter be really, really uh, light. But if there's darks around, I also need to add in some more shadows. And then add some more value here to really get a nice sort of contrast. Now let me see, I'm gonna work a little bit more aggressively so don't get freaked out if I go too fast. because I want these sort of abstract marks to resemble the plant, okay? I'm not worrying about any detail at all. Okay. But then now you can kind of get some really interesting cast shadows with your charcoal. But when you go back now to your compressed, let me grab a compressed, hold on. is 
the number of the number of this. Oh, this is the same for B. Okay. I'm gonna add a little bit more pressure. This is the same value, but you can you can start to see. I'll do some cross hatches. Really blend in some of those areas and get some really interesting darks. But then I can also refine. Try, let's say, for example, this structural jewelry box is very precise in terms of its symmetry. But I'm not interested in the symmetry. I'm interested in terms of the value. I'm going to have the illusion of the box and not just the actual box. And the reason why is because I'm not worrying too much about those details. I'm really just focusing on figuring out the composition because I don't want to waste too much time on rendering too much of what's on the objects. I want to have fun with the lights and the darks and really get in there because you're developing a language. You're developing a system of understanding how you use the charcoal, how you can start to see what you're actually using from your materials. There's almost, there's figures on the jewelry box here. I'm just making a triangle composition saying I'm gonna come back to that a little bit later. Add some, some light here, some darks here. Adding a little bit less pressure because I want that to be a lighter source. Adding some, using my middle finger, kind of blend in some of those areas. Now I have this really interesting loose rendition, loose rendering skill of my box. Did that make sense? Okay. If you guys are silent, hopefully you guys are following along. So if you have any questions or concerns, just feel free to speak. Okay. What about my lemon? Okay. I'm gonna use my, always use the side of your compressed or your vine charcoals kind of really get in there and I want to start developing an interesting texture I'm going to add a value a light value of my lemon and then on the bottom here I'm going to go back and this is a trick I'm going to show you guys take your drawing flip it, okay? The reason why is that now things are more manageable. I already have my composition. I know where things are gonna be. Now I can worry about the small minute details. By flipping and inverting your actual drawings, it makes your mind subconsciously aware of not focusing on too much details and really having fun and looking at to where that light source is coming from. It actually helps you correct and sort of help you really see where your light is sort of uh, emulating from, okay? So I want you to try to do this, to flip your actual drawing and start working upside down. Well, let me flip my uh, photo. And now I can start to see there's only a light source right around here, okay? Everything else around my lemon is sort of almost semi-dark. I'm gonna fill this in. Let me know, guys, if I go too fast, okay? It's almost like a, there's like crevices on the surface of the lemon. Which is interesting because you can get that nice texture. And I just noticed, noticed my arm was on the bottom here. It has blurred and smudged all over the bottom. So I need to either put, put a paper towel or just be mindful and hold your compressed materials upwards. So I'll hold it so you don't actually touch the surface of your paper. If, you, if this doesn't bother you, by all means. But if you really want a nice, clean, crisp drawing, make sure to use those paper towels. Use my fingers here. Okay. 
And I'm going to take my eraser and start adding some texture. And I'm kind of going around the lemon. I want to build upon that texture. I'm just dabbing. That's all I'm doing. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. You guys can see that? Go around my edge. You can soften the edges if you would like. You can harden some of the edges with more pressure. Okay. But then now, now this is a, oh, this is not a compressed charcoal. I need, oh, I need a compressed charcoal. Let's see how this looks. This is not gonna work, but for the sake of the demo, we'll use the white just for the sake of understanding how to use the compressed white. Now the white will be an interesting process because you'll start to see how that starts to blend and more highlight. I'm adding a little bit of pressure. You can kind of see that on here. It almost has a coolish color, coolish tint that I need to be mindful of. But then now, let's flip it back up. Now my lemon is at a second stage, which is at their second sort of preliminary uh, layer. I can now start to look at this a little bit clearly, refine some of my edges. What questions do we have, guys? <laughs> 